Hey guys, welcome to the world of 28mm. Okay, this uh, episode is going to be a bit different to usual. I'm joined by fellow Terraniac uh, Barney. Hello. Uh, I think some people have seen the uh, photos of the Mordheim board that we made about five or six years yeah. ago, never really finished. So we decided we're going to be building a brand new one. So, um, yeah, we. I felt a bit bad for doing it. We took up all of the bits of the old Mordheim board, all the barrels, and kept those for, for future projects because they had a lot more depth and mm. character to it. So we've kept some of the, the nicer pieces we made, and um, then the rest got um, sacrificed to the dark gods <laughs> yeah. to give us luck on building <laughs> our I, new board. I didn't sleep well that night. No, no, no. <laughs> so we come up with an idea that the first thing we need to think about when designing this board now is to really sit down and think about the gameplay. You know, that's the first thing, and I think that's probably true of whatever system you're playing, whether yeah, you're going to be playing it. Malifaux, whether you're going to be playing Frostgrave. How the dynamics of the game work is the key thing you need to be thinking about before you start, because you could build the most incredible-looking board for whatever gaming system it is you're playing, put your miniatures on it, get the rule book out, and find that the terrain you've done just does not work well, with the, the system you have a you have a game of bolt action on a on a, a more time or a mm. necromunda board it's just not gonna yeah. happen is it no True exactly movement isn't gonna work and so how do, how does that apply to more time well what we forgot when we were building the last board is the extent to which more is really a three-dimensional game and we realized we'd missed a bit of a trick with the last one by not building in a subterranean layer uh, so we've decided that we're going to have essentially three layers, a subterranean layer, then what we'll call the ground floor, which is kind of like sea level or river level mm. in this case, and then one large floor above that. Roughly speaking, the subterranean layer we've decided is going to be 30 centimetres high and then about, we're mixing metric and imperial here, but we are, about we? <laughs> two feet square and th <laughs> about a foot deep. Um, because we found any lower than that, and you haven't got the headroom to actually be moving the miniatures around in the subterranean layer. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, this is how the gameplay really dictates how you're going to how build, you build your board. How you build your board. Yeah. So that's something we thought about for a long time and we just stared at bits of paper <laughs> blank and, of and, and blank pieces of board and styrofoam uh, mm. for quite some time, perhaps uh, an embarrassing amount of time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> way too embarrassing amount of time. Um, and then we decided that we, we, we would just start testing the height of the, the layers that we're going to use so we tried 30 centimeters to start off with on the supports you'll see these wooden supports in the video then we thought no it's too much we went down to about 15 or 20 i think that's right yeah and then we realized that was not enough headroom as it were yeah, room to get your hands moving get your hand into the center of the board i think that was our yeah. main concern for the underneath wasn't it it, it was, was we yeah. could stick to the outside where you mm. you know you haven't got to reach in but then when we came to the centre of it, it was kind of like... Mm. There would have been so much wasted board space. space. Yeah, that's it. So, yeah, that that was our, our first major decision. Once we decided on the, the size of the board and the kind of scale um, that we were going to be going for and the need for depth as well as height mm. in the boards, um, our next question was really about what do we want on these boards? What sort of features do we want and how do those features work with each other yeah. because a big thing we realized on making the last board was that we had lots of fun buildings and interesting individual elements of terrain on there what we didn't have really was a cohesive city that felt like even though it obviously it's a fantasy city it didn't feel like it worked as a place if it had actually existed, it didn't feel like it worked as a place. That's right. It is all about adding functionality to the board. That's isn't it, it, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's adding life to it to yeah. say, yeah. okay, well, if 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 people actually lived here, this would this would mm. be where uh, you know supplies for the, the yeah. city would be brought in, yeah. and then 
you'd have a main road going from there mm. to where mm. it's all distributed to the you know the the shops or the yeah. traders or thinking like this really does start to help you build in such a way where things feel connected even though it's a fantasy game system it adds a whole other sense of reality mm. to it it's not just about using the right water effects it's not just about using the right scale bricks it's about adding this other element of realism and the first thing really at this stage is just thinking about how does it all tie together mm. because then the next stage is to be thinking now we can plan how we're going to build this 